after reading, after reading the stimulus packet, I came to the research question. How do citizens in first world countries have more opportunities for success as compared to those in third world countries? The claim that I came up with after all my research is that citizens of first world countries often have more success due to their economic advantages, advancements in science and technology, and greater equality among genders. The source that stood out to me the most in the stimulus packet was a world without work by Derek Thompson, specifically the following quote. Youngstown Steel Mills delivered such great prosperity that the city was a model of the American dream. Due to Youngstown's location, they had great economic and social success for their citizens. And this inspired me to think on more of a global scale and to think about how the location of a country could impact the amount of success that the citizens have. The first topic that I wanted to focus on was economic success of the citizens. The unemployment rate in third world countries is currently at an all-time high. In the Middle East and North Africa, the unemployment rate is roughly 30%. And with high unemployment rates comes high poverty rates. Adam Smith and economic professors see that third world countries live without jobs or without economic advantages. And the governments of third world countries often try to find a solution to this by looking to borrow money from the World Bank or from other countries. However, this comes with a great risk because if they're not able to repay the money that they borrow, then this puts a huge economic burden on the government. Also, there have been recent debates on whether or not third world countries should even be required to repay back the money that they borrow. But this also comes with great risk because if they are not required to repay back the money, then there's no telling how much money they will try to borrow or if they will take advantage of the resources that they are using. And as you can see in this graph, since the early 1990s, the highest unemployment rates have been in the Middle East and North Africa and have been the lowest in more developed and more European countries. Scientifically, it is very hard for third world countries to stay up to date with the evolving first world countries. Um, the most important battle that they face is the battle for trying to find clean drinking water. So, um, children and citizens are at high risk of developing mental and physical issues because the drinking water there is not safe. And as you can see in the picture, this is how much work they have to go through to get one bucket of water for their village and that we in first world countries take this for great, um, take it for granted. And the healthcare in third world countries is also very poor because the medicine that they receive has been tested in the United States or in other European countries and has been shipped away to third world countries if they are about to expire or if they are not um, successful while testing. And the governments pay a very high price in third world countries for these drugs even though they are not safe and there is no guarantee that they would actually help the citizens. Women, especially, experience great discrimination among men. And you can see this in their lack of education and their lack of basic knowledge. In about 155 countries, women have their laws against women and preventing their economic success and preventing what type of jobs that they can have. This puts them at a huge disadvantage because if they are not allowed to leave the home, or are they not allowed to have a paying job and they cannot survive um, economically. And then this leaves all the work up to the husband of the family to provide for his family. And it is also important to note that in 65 countries, they are trying to create more laws that helps um, women create a better knowledge of their surroundings and to create um, better skills for them that they can use outside of the home instead of just working in the home. Um, one of the solutions that I came up with to help women specifically is to create better education for them by creating and building more schools and by sending them school supplies. Because as you saw in the previous picture, they were sitting on the floor, there was no desks, there was no chairs or any notebooks or anything to take notes. However, this might be very difficult for the government to fund because as I stated before, the unemployment rate and poverty rate is very high, so they do not have a lot of money to spare to create schools. And to help them create more money and help the economy as a whole, I came up with a solution of businesses raging, raising their minimum wage and creating more jobs for them. However, um, business owners might be opposed to this because that would require them to give away more of their profit and business owners are very protective of the money that they earn and they would rather not give it away to get more workers. In conclusion, I'd like to end with a quote by Malcolm Gladwell, who is the author of The Outliers. Success is not the brightest to succeed, nor is success the sum of decisions and efforts we make on our behalf. It is rather a gift. Outliers are those who have been given opportunities for success, and who have the strength and presence of mind to, to seize them. 
Success is purely based on luck. In third world countries, citizens are greatly unlucky because they um, have a disadvantage due to their location. It is not the talent that they lack, it is rather the opportunity given to them for success. And it's time to change the gap between first and third world countries' success rates. Okay, Hannah, a couple of questions for you. <clears throat> what evidence did you gather that you did not use, and then why did you choose not to use it? Um, there was a lot of evidence that I found that um, for children especially, since they are put at a disadvantage due to their drinking water, they develop mental and physical issues like I stated. But there is a, I found an article and it stated how they um, do not have a drive to go to school because without the schools there, then there is no push for them to have an education. And I thought this kind of went against what I was saying earlier because I stated that um, they did have a drive and that it was important for them, so I didn't include that because I thought it was going against my argument. Okay. Uh, and your next question would be, what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? Um, I would can, uh, give them advice to really consider all the different perspectives because when I stepped into this, I was only thinking economically. And um, it was really important to analyze, especially, it surprised me, scientifically, and all the disadvantages that they have due to their lack of education and lack of technology and medicine, especially because that really impacts third world countries and really puts them behind first world countries and is one of the major reasons that they do not have success.